This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right. The truth is going to set us free as a people, my brother. So uh, you say you were the Israelites, right? No, I'm not. But we're too, but just about close. Say it again. We part of a different tribe, but we're the same. Let me ask you. All right, brother, what, where do you see yourself on this sign right here? On this side is what our oppressors call us, American blacks, uh, West Indians. Uh, but this, is, this, on this side is where, this is what God calls us. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Where do you see your father on this side? Is he a so-called American black? Yeah, I think we are with Judah, yeah. Judah, right. So that's the tribe you come from. The so-called American Negroes, you are from the tribe of Judah according to the scriptures. That's right. Read that John 8.32 one more time. This is the book of John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Right. So Jesus Christ is telling us we shall know the truth. And this truth is going to set our people free. Because right now we're still in slavery mentally. Still in, in slavery spiritually. So you're going to know the truth and the truth is going to make you free. The truth of this Bible. Such as that you are the Israelites. Right. Let's prove that. Give me our Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. Let's prove that our people, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians, you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Go ahead. This is the book, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So these be the words which Moses spake unto all the Israelites, God's chosen people. Chapter 7, verse 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. No. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. God is saying that Israelite is a holy people unto him. My brother with a hat on. Brother with a hat, army fatigue jacket. Bro. Keep it. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. Right, so God said that the Israelites are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right, the Israelites is above all races upon the earth. Right. And that's us. Sit, sit now with a red jacket on. Sit, smoke a cigarette. I'll talk to you for a second. I'll talk to you for a minute. Say again. Let's show you a few things out of the Bible that our people don't know. So we're out here showing our people their true identity according to the scriptures. Have you, have you ever heard that you're an Israelite? No, you never heard that? You, uh, you go to church or anything? No, well that's a good thing, because the churches teach us lies. That's the church has right. been us lies for over hundreds of years. That's right. But we're going to show you the truth of the Bible, that you you, you are Islam. You are God's chosen people. That's right. So read that Deuteronomy 101 one more time. Bring it out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. You heard of the Israelites? No? Well, according to the Bible, that's God's chosen people. Right. That's, the, that's the people God said is above all other races on the earth. That's his special people. 7 and 6, let's prove that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. All right, so God is saying all races, my sis, is not created equal. He has a special people that's above everybody else. Right. And we're going to prove that's talking about us. It out. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is, a, this is the key chapter that identifies who we are as a people. When you read this chapter, this, this chapter, you see, you see portrayed in all the slavery movies. Why? Because it's talking about us. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. It out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God is still speaking to his chosen people. If y'all don't keep my commandments, I'm gonna put these curses on you as a people. And you already know a curse is a bad thing, right, sis? Right. So we're, so we're gonna read some of these curses. So these curses help identify you know, who the Israelites are. So verse 16. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So God is still speaking to his people. He say, you're going to be cursed in the city, meaning you're going to be living in the hoods and the ghettos. That's why whatever, whatever state you're going to, whatever city you're going to, we live in the worst parts of any city. Right. 
curse in the city and curse in the fields. We was in the cotton fields, picking cotton. Our people was. So they say, you Israel shall be cursing the city and cursing the field. Right, sis? Uh, verse 48. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 48, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So God is saying, let me get up the side too. God is saying, therefore we're going to serve our enemies. Hold that up. He said, therefore you're going to serve your enemies. Remember we just read a verse about cursing the field? That was us picking cotton in the, in the cotton fields. Cursing the city, cursing the field. Therefore you're going to serve your enemies. Who's the enemies God's talking about that we're going to serve? What people? What people do we serve in the cotton fields? White people, right. God said, you're going to serve your enemies. For breaking my commandments, I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Go ahead. Right. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness. In hunger, thirst, and nakedness, you got to serve your enemies. Meaning, whatever we want as a people, we got to go to the same people who put these yokes of iron on our necks. Go ahead. And in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. That same enemy is going to put a yoke of iron on your necks. That happened to us, right, sis? Did it happen to the Chinese? Did this happen to the Chinese? Uh, no. No, it didn't. Or, or uh, what about the white man who called himself a Jew? Did this happen to them? Yeah. I know you see a lot of white Jewish people in, uh, in Cleveland. But did this happen to their forefathers, what we're reading? No. No. But it didn't happen to our forefathers, right? Right, so this is proven that we are the Israelites. That's right. Verse 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. So now we're going to read, we're going to read how our forefathers came over here to America. That's in the Bible. Slavery is in the Bible. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Right here he said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt. That word Egypt just means slavery. I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again. But this time how? With ships. With what? With ships. With cargo slave ships. That's what happened to your forefathers, right, sis? Right, so this is proving that, that we are the Israelites. Right. We're the real Jews. We're God's chosen people. Right. And the reason he put us in slavery is for breaking his commandments. Right. But we're supposed to be above everybody else. But finish that off. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof, whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about our homeland. Once we came over here, we didn't go back to our homeland no more again, right? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Once we got off those slave ships, we were sold unto our enemies. For bond men, slave man, and bond women, slave woman. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you, meaning no man's going to save you out of these conditions that, I'm, that, that God's about to put us in. Because we had Martin Luther King tried. You know, he died. Malcolm X tried, he died. That's right. All these black you know, leaders try to save us, but they couldn't because uh, God prophesied that this will happen to us. Therefore, we had to go through it. Right. So, all these curses happened to us because we broke God's commandments. Right now, our people is living the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Give me 28, verse 1. Because there was a flip side to it. Like God didn't just, you know, Israel was curses and that was it. There was a, a flip side to it, a situation to it. Right. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. It up. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that was Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. If y'all kept the commandments, I would set you on high above all of the nations on the earth. Let me give you one of those blessings. Uh, verse 7. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 7. The Lord, the, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord, the Lord shall, shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Right, so he said the Lord shall cause our enemies that rise up against us to be smitten before our faces. Meaning... If we had kept the commandments, no nation could rise, rise against us. That's right. We would defeat any nation that come against us. But because we broke the commandments, you know, now we got to serve our enemies. They, 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 they conquered us. They, they defeated us. Right. So the solution to all this, how do we get back above where we should be? You know, we got to come back to his commandments. We got to come back to his commandments. Uh, give me a, 
Acts 3, 19, all right, quick. Our people must come back to God's commandments. Right. That's what's going to you know, turn turn the tables. Bring it out. Yes, we must right. come back to his commandments. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Bring it out. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Say, Repent ye therefore and be converted. Yes. That your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come to, come from the presence of the Lord. So God's going to refresh this earth you know, through fire and set the proper course, which is the Israelites should be in rulership. But we got to repent and be converted. How do we repent, sis? You know how to repent? No? All right, give me uh, Ezekiel 18.30. What does it mean for our people to repent? Because uh, he said repent and be converted. Bring it out. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. It says re repent and turn yourselves, that's a key word, turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Meaning stop breaking my laws. That's how you repent. Stop breaking the laws that was given to us as a people. That's right. So, go back to Acts 3. Can read it one more time? This is the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right. Repent and be converted. So repentance is coming back to his laws, right? Then God's gonna refresh this earth once we do that. So, some of, some of, some of the uh, sins that our people is into nowadays that we gotta you know, stop breaking, stop doing, is, for one example, I know you're smoking a cigarette. Did you know that I was against the Bible? You did? You know what verse that is? No? All right, we gotta read it for you. And as you're reading this, remember this is to help you repent. Because if you don't repent, you know that the wages of sin is death. That's right, bring so, it up. So we're gonna teach you this, show you how to repent. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So we're speaking to all the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians. You are the temple of God. Right. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, so if any man, if any of you Israelites defy your temple, how do you defy your temple? Smoking cigarettes. That caused cancer. Right. That's how you defy your temple. Smoking weed, cracks, drugs, all that defiles your temple. Go ahead. Him shall God destroy. Him shall what? Him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. So in repentance, you know, if you want eternal life, you got to stop smoking cigarettes. Right. Our people must stop smoking cigarettes. Right. That's a sin according to the Most High God. That's right. You're defiling your temple. Right. Read it, uh, give me a... Um, read that one more time. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Bring it up. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. My sister, you are the temple of God. You're a special person. You're God's chosen. We're God's elect. Go ahead. Right. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. So that, that's how serious it is. You got to stop smoking cigarettes. Put the cigarettes down. Give me a uh, John 14, 15. Because also in keeping the commandments, in keeping the commandments, that's how we show God that we love him. Right. So it's important to keep God's commandments. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So this is Jesus Christ speaking. He said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love, if, if our people love God, I want to show God that they love him, it must come back to his commandments, such as not smoking cigarettes. If you still smoke cigarettes after hearing this verses, that proves what? That you hate God. You hate his laws. You hate his commandments. Teach. So God is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right, sis? You follow? All right. So let's get another law. Give me a... Uh, Deuteronomy 22. Bring it up! <clears throat> sis, you see yourself on this side? Where do you see your father on this side? First. The first one? All right. So you'll be from the tribe of Judah. You know who else came from the tribe of Judah? Oh, this man right here. Christ. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Did you know Christ was black according to the Bible? You never knew that? All right, let's get that right quick. Bring it out. The true image of Jesus Christ. Bring it out. Because we've been lied to over 400 years that Jesus Christ was a white man, a Caucasian with blonde stringy hair. Right. But let's see, according to the Bible, what is the true image of Christ? Who is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ. Follow what it says? The revealing of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, verse 14, 
His head and his hairs were white like wool. So as we're reading the description, sis, I want you to do one thing. Um, take a look at this image, and then take a look at the image given to, to us as slavery. Read that one more time. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So which image has white woolly hair? This one, right? Correct. Go ahead. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. It said his eyes was like a, a flame of fire, meaning the whites of Christ's eyes were red. Because Christ drank wine, but in moderation. He wasn't no drunker, but he did drink wine. And his feet, read that one. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And it said his feet was like fine brass, sis. What color is brass? Say it again. What color is brass? Brass, like bronze brass. Penny, penny. A penny? Uh, brown. A brownish color, right? So he looked, John the Reverend looked at his feet and said it was like fine brass. Right. So what color is brass? You said brown, right? So if your feet is brown, what color is the rest of your body? Brown, right? Right, so Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, is a black man. Let's finish that off, though. Let's see how dark he was. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Christ looked so dark like he got burned in a furnace. That's, right. That's how black Jesus Christ was. Right. Right. White woolly hair, skin like right. brass burnt in a furnace. That's a black man. Right? They lied about that. So, that's what Jesus Christ really looked like according to the Bible. Give me, give me the Father. What do you think the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ's Father, what do you think he looked like? Bring it out! Probably black too. And that's in the Bible. He is black. Everybody prove that. Daniel chapter 10. 10 to 5. 7 to 9. Let's see what the Heavenly Father looked like. We just read Jesus Christ being a black man. White woolly hair, skin like brass, burnt in the furnace. Now let's read about the Heavenly Father, the Most High God. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days, meaning he has no beginning nor ending of days. He was always here. The Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Say the hair of his head like the pure wool. So this most High guy, he got the hair like pure wool. What people got wool, wool texture here on earth today? Black people, right? So this is proof that the Most High God is a black man. Right. Jesus Christ, a black man. Right. The Israelites, black people. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.